Hi, I'm Arlene McIntyre, Creative Director at Ventura Design, and you are listening to Shut the Front Door, a lighthearted podcast that will bring you through the front door and into the homes of influential and interesting people. Home for me is one of the most important things in my life. My career has fortunately given me the opportunity to work closely with people and to help them create a home they will cherish forever. TV presenter, stylist, and fashion designer, Darren Kennedy is one of Ireland's most stylish men. Darren's presenting skills have seen him host programs on the most popular TV channels across the UK and Ireland, as well as writing for publications as far afield as the USA. In 2018, he became an entrepreneur with the launch of a successful range of grooming products for men called Kennedy & Co. A dog lover like myself, it's my great pleasure to welcome Darren to Shut the Front Door. Well, thank you, Darren, for joining us. Thank you so much. That's quite the intro there. I don't know. I don't don't think I can live up to that, but thanks. (laughs) I think you can. I really would have loved to have met you in person, Darren, today, um, but the safest way for both of us. Isn't it wonderful that we can do this, though, that technology allows us to operate, to fully function, to record things like podcasts from the comfort and safety of our own homes? Yeah, it's incredible. It's great, you know, that we can all still communicate because I think that's going to be what gets us through this really is just being able to reach out. Yeah, it's that sense of connection. Funny enough, I was thinking about this on my walk the other day with Harry, my socially isolated <sighs> with my dog. Yeah. Um, and actually I found there's a cemetery nearby, which is very empty. So uh, it's a good place to go. Um, I was thinking about it and, you know, at the beginning of this crisis, I was kind of saying to myself, OK, you know, I have to make the most of this time to be productive Every day, I'm going to start the day with a to-do list of five things to do. And and that would be, you know, I'm not necessarily that regimented all the time, but I kind of would be quite focused. And then I was kind of, I was getting stuck into it. And then I realized, do you know what? I actually think this is the opportunity to just dial it down a few notches. I think for everybody, just to take a step back and slow the pace of life down, because if not, in many respects, it's a missed opportunity. And I'm not saying for one second, obviously, uh, it's a, you know, it's a huge crisis and my heart goes out to anyone affected by it and anyone who's losing or has lost loved ones, obviously. But at the same yeah. time, you know, if life gives you lemons and all that. Yeah, make lemonade and, and just, um, yeah, review your life. I think everyone's doing a life review at the moment. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely forced us to to look in the mirror in in many respects. Yeah, and just our daily habits and all that come with that as well. Like, you know, it, like a mixed blessing for sure. It's definitely a very, very sad and difficult time for so many. Yeah. I think everyone's going to review and look at their lives differently after this. Yeah, I mean, even how we work, how we live, how we how we communicate. Um, I hope it doesn't have the effect of, of it, was, it, was, it was interesting. I was watching a movie. Was it a, yeah, it was a movie the other night. And, uh, they, there was two people in the movie, two characters, and they greeted each other and gave them a hug. And my first instinct was to say no. In my mind, I was like, no, you can't do that. You have to step yeah. up. You know, and it's funny how quickly our reactions and responses change. Yeah. It's so sad to think, though, that like shaking hands will be kind of like, you know, this really awkward moment. Like, is it safe? Is it OK? Like it really moving forward, we're, we're all going to have to think differently about these things. Yes, we will. But listen, do you know what? I think the one thing about humankind is our resilience and our ability to move on. And hopefully this time, six months, we it'll feel like a weird dream. So, Darren, I would love to start asking you some interesting questions about yourself. And as um, I have an interior design company, I am always in homes and I'm really interested in, in, in the people we work with. And I generally like to ask, you know, questions, even going back to their childhood home, their memories of, of what their childhood home might have been like. Can you share that with us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I grew up in a very modest uh, three bedroom house in uh, the suburb on the north side of Dublin. So it was nothing uh, especially glamorous or fancy. Uh, it was a, a, mm-hmm. three, a three bed semi detached house, which I absolutely love and have the fondest memories of. Uh, interestingly though my parents were quite nomadic and still still continue to be so and I mean even throughout my childhood we moved house four times and my parents are currently in the process of moving again I think it just gives them it's a new project and it's a new lease of life for them so they kind of like they make I think it's a great ability to be able to you know make your nest anywhere because we all get so attached to our homes which I think is phenomenal and it makes sense but ultimately I think it's what you have inside you that that is the most important thing. And you bring that everywhere you go. And for me, I guess that was 
that was the sense that was instilled in me through my parents and my both my parents were very and always have been very interested in in style and i mean style beyond clothes i mean aesthetics and generally uh, in general and when it came to uh, the house i mean i do remember the living room we had this gorgeous old chocolate brown leather sofa and my mother used to have the most gorgeous kind of throws and uh, sheepskin uh, kind of throws over the back of it and a beautiful big old fireplace that in winter I used to stand in front of wearing mm. nothing but my my teeny tiny underwear I must have been about five or six <laughs> <laughs> bowl of raisins in my hand watching uh, He-Man on TV because I was obsessed <laughs> and um, and you know so there was a great sense of freedom in the house. My parents were never, yeah. was they loved it, you know, and they kept the place clean and tidy and they loved it. Like, you know, we did have a good room, but we lived in the good room as well. Like they weren't like, everything's just for show or everything should look a certain way. It was to be lived in and to have fun in. And there was always a great sense and, and a great sound of laughter in my house, actually. And me and my mother uh, used to of a, a random Saturday. We would kind of go, we'd be, we'd be in a room and we'd look at the room and we'd go, that sofa would be nice over there, wouldn't it? And that rug there. And if we put that against the wall, really? maybe if we switch this around. So we'd always entertain ourselves by kind of redecorating. Now, it was it was always the same, like nine times out of 10, it was the same sofa, it was the same chair, it was the same lamp, it was the same painting, but just completely rearranged. And we used to have so much fun kind of trying to, the two of us trying to move sofas together. And, you know, my father would come home and go, what has happened here? The place is completely different, you know? So that was always nice. That is, that's great. So you have always had a little bit of an eye for detail in your home. You, you enjoy it. Yes, I do. I do. I very, you know, I believe that how we live, um, how we dress, how we, uh, groom ourselves, uh, our workspaces and our living spaces are all a reflection of ourselves and our state of mind. And, and I guess our, uh, sense of self and what we want to project in the world. So I mm-hmm. know, you know, speaking for myself that if, and, and actually this is a really tangible one for me, the nature of what I do, a lot of clothes come into my life through work, which on the face of it sounds amazing, but actual fact, space is a commodity. And I find I get semi anxious or stressed about having too many things like that so uh, and if the house gets too cluttered or things start to get too cluttered I feel my mind gets cluttered and my thoughts aren't as clear yeah so I will uh, consciously and actively clear out every two or three months now I mean that would be more the wardrobe side of things but Mm -hmm. I have also extended that to to um furniture and and little pieces around the house because I think we gather so many things as we're going it's kind of it's listen it's the world we live in it's that consumerism um and I've become much more conscious of less is more and obviously those things lasting a long time so what I will do is and again the moment will strike me again I'm going to say like a lightning bolt but I'll just Mm -hmm. be looking at something and I'll go no and I'll pick up a bag and I'll walk around the house and anything that I don't love or that isn't bringing joy or special or adding anything particular to a space I'll put in one of these bags and I'll bring it to charity shop incredible wow that's great that you're like that because I I mean most people are hoarders or they'll find a little drawer to put all those maybes into well I have a drawer as well I'm not going to lie to you and you, have a, you have a maybe drawer yeah the key is they have to leave the house within the hour because if they don't wow I'll start going back through the bag going oh no actually I like this oh no this would be nice there that's me it has to go and also if you look in the if I were to open the boot of my car you gasp because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they don't. I don't have time to go to the charity shop or whatever straight away. But in order to get them out of my space and not back where they began, I'll put them in the boot of my car. And oftentimes I forget about them. So the boot of my car has all sorts of things in it. I am the same, Darren, with the back of my car. It's ridiculous. I'm not joking. My team cannot believe it. Like all that should be in the back of the car really is my hard hat, my, my boots, my side gear. And whatever you know, the essentials. But it's just full of junk. I don't even know how this happens. I actually think I actually think I have a bottle of Aperol spritz in the back of my. Car. <laughs> <laughs> and oh well, that's important. You need to get that out of there. You know what? It's been there since last summer. 
Anyway. Tell me a bit about your teenage room. Like, what was that like? Is that when you really started to hone in on your own personal style? Was that your little sanctuary? And my, I have a really vivid memory of my room as a teenager. So up until about the age of six, I shared a room with my brother. We had bunk beds and I loved it. It was our little sanctuary. And I used to, I used to always think, I mean, he's my older brother. And I used to always think that we were like a real life Bert and Ernie. Hey, Bert. Hey, Ernie. <laughs> And then yeah. I moved into my own room. And initially I was like, I didn't want to be in my own room. I enjoyed sharing my room with my brother. And uh, I went to, I insisted on going on a student exchange when I was 13 to France. And I went mm-hmm. over, my dad arranged it, and I went over thinking I was little Mr. Independent. Every night I cried my eyes out. And Aww. the family were so gorgeous. And I'm, I'm coming to a point here. The family were so gorgeous that they'd say, do you want to ring home every night? So I'd ring from like the, the hallway in, in the apartment. And mom and dad would ask me, how are you getting on? I'd say, yeah, everything's great, great, great. This is what we did today. It's so much fun. I'm delighted. And then I'd say, after I hang up the call, I'd announce to the family that I'm going for a walk. I would go down to the local payphone, reverse charges back to my parents and cry my eyes out. Oh, no. And every, for you. every night my parents would say, we can get you a flight home the next day. It's fine. You can come home. And I'm like, no, I'm going to give it another day. And so I stuck <laughs> with it, right? I stuck with it. But I arrived home after three weeks. Literally, I thought I had been in, for me, it was the equivalent of being in Outer Mongolia for three years. Oh, you poor thing. I arrive home and my mother had completely surprised me by completely transforming my bedroom. And, uh, it was the most gorgeous color of blue. So I've always loved blue. And uh, so I, it, was, it was like a small room, but like I had a single bed. I had this lovely blue carpet, blue walls. Anything that could be blue was blue. I think my sheets were like a blue, like a, a, a blue check type vibe. And then I had this like big stand where I had a fish tank because I've always loved animals and I yeah. had an aquarium there. And then on the wall, I didn't really have posters, but what I did have when I was a teenager and a youngster, I collected beer mats from okay. all around the world. And my dad worked in the airline. So my dad used to travel a lot. So he'd bring me back all these different like beer mats from like Mexico and all these very exotic places. So I decorated the wall in beer mats. And actually, it was it was a really nice montage once I had enough of them. I actually had an almost walk-in wardrobe. Now, that sounds far more glamorous than it is, but basically, okay. double doors, and you could step into it before you actually got to the shelves. So in my mind, that was my, double, my walk-in wardrobe. And that was really it. That was my room. Super simple. I had a little desk to do my homework in and my, my studies and a little chair. And uh, oh, I had a test actually that I used as a chair, and and that was it. Really simple, but but great memories. So, and color was important to you. Color, the blue you mentioned. Yeah, color has always been uh, super important to me, and, and played a major uh, role in my life. Um, and I, again, I think that comes from comes from my 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 mother in particular like again she always injects color in the house through things like flowers and you know she loves tulips and she loves lilies and we always had a new injection of color and we would always play around with things so even though you know they couldn't afford my parents couldn't afford they had three kids they couldn't afford to be buying new sofas every couple of years and things like that but my mom was you know she had the knack for injecting newness or a sense of freshness through soft furnishings and i guess i got that from her and um, I, I adore color. I adore color. And as much as I appreciate monochrome uh, as much as the next, I think life yeah. is too short to live in black and white. Oh, so. completely. I think color really impacts your whole mood. Uh, it can influence you in a big way. And actually, I'm looking around. <laughs> I'm looking around my living room here now, and there's just so much color. So much color. Oh, good. Yes, yeah, so much color. Especially now, I think more than ever, you just need that kind of feeling of like color has such great energy. I think that it throws off as well. So. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it literally lifts lifts my mood. In actual fact, I did this gorgeous kind of regal teal on one of the walls in the living room, mm. which I had as, as a kind of picture wall. And I've got really, I'm lucky, I've got really high ceilings. I think they're about 12 foot. And I had done the yeah. picture wall kind of, uh, you know, not quite floor to ceiling, but almost going all the way up to ceiling. And a few weeks ago, this now this is so this is the influence of my mother and the childhood. A few weeks ago, I was sitting here one Saturday morning looking at the wall, and I was like, 
I want to see more of that wall. So I took everything off. There must have been <laughs> a of paintings. Some of them were like six foot in size, canvases and everything. And I've now streamlined it and I've got three new pieces of art that I had framed and they're pride of place on the wall and I love it. And everyone who's come in has gone, have you got the wall painted? I went, no, that wall was painted that color four years ago. It's all oh, wow. in that color, but no one noticed it. You know, I want yep. it's going to go pink because I love my plants. I've loads of plants. And I thought mm-hmm. the green against the pink would be lovely. But then I thought, you know what? To Instagram, I'm sticking with the regal teal or whatever it is. Wow. And when did you, when did you do that? Um, I did that, um, I, I think it was probably three years ago. The color. Yeah. Yeah, I did that three years ago, I think. Three-ish years ago. Um, yeah, because that color was so, it was, and it still is. It, I think it really came on the scene about, yeah, three, four years ago. It really yeah, and I, again, it's that blue because obviously I've always loved blue, but mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a calming blue. It's a very mm-hmm. it's a very um, it's a, it, it puts you at a sense of ease when you sit down. Mm-hmm. Uh, restful, yeah, it, it restful. That's exactly it. And like any sort of wood, really pops against it. Like it really, yeah, I know it. You know what I mean? And the greenery, yes, it really kind of it makes the space. It. it it carries the space well. Yeah, and it's actually gorgeous any time of the day. It's beautiful in the morning when the sun hits against it, and it's beautiful in the evening. It's quite moody as well. So. Yes, absolutely. 100% agree with you there. And so in your current um, digs where you're living now, so you're based between Ireland and the UK. Yes. Okay, so so let's just focus even on, on where you are now. Where would How do you relax and how do you unwind in the evening? Oh, do you know what I do? I will come in, I will set the, like put the lighting on quite low, dim. Mm-hmm. I will light a few candles and I will plonk myself on the sofa. Harry, my little dog, he's a mini Yorkshire Terrier. He's a tiny little fella really? uh, who I've had. He'll be 14 this August. So I've had him since he was oh. six weeks old. He will normally jump up on the well actually he can't jump up on the sofa because he's too small I'll pick him up on the sofa <laughs> and we'll cuddle and he'll nuzzle into me and you know Aww. just and just take it easy and put some nice music on maybe some nice relaxing jazz and uh just <laughs> kick back mm. you know like, and like what's your morning ritual like how do you start your day I start my day the same every day pretty much um I I I I I'm fortunate that I get lots of lovely natural light um, here where I live. And what I will do every morning is the first thing I do, I get up, normally woken up by Harry because he's uh, very much a creature of habit. And I will make sure he's got food and water and everything he needs and let him out, get some air and do whatever he needs to do. And then I will have, uh, I'll pop on the Nespresso machine and I will brew my first of many cups of coffee. And I yes. sit, I've got a kind of burnt orange kind of bucket chair that I will perch myself in and uh, just take in the world, let my mind wake up, look at the sky, hopefully it's blue. And when would you would you entertain a lot? Would you have friends around your house a lot? And if you and if you do, my question is, how do you entertain? Yeah, I'm getting better at that. I mean, sometimes it's been tricky because I have, you know, the past eight years I've been traveling so much, you know, mm-hmm. between the UK or wherever else, the, the US a little bit more in the past couple of years as well. So sometimes, a, it's difficult to plan. So I don't necessarily plan in advance because I'm not sure if I'm going to be around, which is not a good way to live, actually. And I, I am changing that. And secondly, sometimes I get back on a Friday evening and I'm just exhausted. And the last yeah. thing I want to do is to have to cook for like a group of people. That yeah. being said, if you come over to my house, and actually I've had quite a few little gatherings recently before all this uh, COVID-19 stuff kicked in. And it was so nice. You know you're in for a good night because I've got a little bar area and I've got this uh, cactus-shaped um, fluorescent light, which is green. And if the I know them. If the cactus is lighting, it's going to be a good night. <laughs> <laughs> it's it a means, cactus night. Excellent. Yeah, it means the bar is open, the tequila and the mezcal and whatever you're having yourself is flowing and we're, we're, we're settling in for the evening. But normally what I'll do is... Uh, you know, I, I'll cook something. I, I'm quite low key. Um, we, you know, I've got an island. We tend to sit around the island or else move to the table for dinner. And I like to, you know, just put all the food out and let everyone help themselves. And, you know, it's, 
Mikasa, Sukasa type vibes and you know it's it's family eating that's how i like to do it not too prissy and just everyone kick back having lots of nice nosh and and nice drinks and a laugh and you know that's it and what's your biggest luxury item in your home like what piece luxury okay so when you define luxury for me are you talking expense an object so like yeah maybe not 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 so much a, a favorite personal object that has memories i know what that is so my favorite yeah. personal object is a <laughs> it's kind of a random one actually and it's sitting here in the bookshelf looking at me as we speak it's a i'm going to say porcelain elephant an elephant um, I guess from India, that's all dressed with a big thing on its back with its Gorgeous. tongue up over its head. And I say porcelain, it's no more porcelain than the man on the moon. I'd say it was probably got from, I'm going to, I'm actually just lifting it up now and I'm looking at it to see if there's any engraving on it or any detail. No, um, it's kind of like a bookend, I guess. And uh, it's, it was my granny's and oh. so she's always here in the house with me. That sounds cool, that, that that piece, actually. I love when you see pieces like that in someone's home because it, it means that they are, you know, they are sentimental and they have collected things. And it's interesting to see what those are because it really is their story, really, who they are. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree completely. You know, I wonder, it's, you know, it's just up on a shelf here. 90% of people probably wouldn't even notice it. But, but you know it's there. So how have you styled your home, like apart from your furniture and the color that you've got layered into your house? Uh, do you know what? My house is quite eclectic. I love color, as I, as I mentioned. And I also mm-hmm. love, um, I love my clothes and I like being able to see them as well. So I'm just even looking around uh, here. I have a floor to ceiling bookshelf, which I had kind of installed. I had it built in. And a really good tip for anyone who's just looking for ways of injecting color and interest into their house without going crazy is I've color coded all my books. So you get excellent blasts of like vibrant green, which love it. And I've go down into the yellows, which move into the oranges and then up into the reds. Then we've got the cold, the cooler shades, the blues into the kind of icy blues into the, the light greens. Which love that awesome. idea. And you know, it's something that everyone comments about when they, when they come into the house. And um, I also love, I also love plants. Um, yeah. I have a lot of plants in my house and I've always loved plants and nature and wildlife. Um, and I love the fact that they are continually growing and evolving and changing a space. Uh, you know, so, the, you know, whilst I do enjoy flowers and the color mm-hmm. that they bring, plants are constantly changing. And actually it's been really reassuring during this period of, you know, you know of, of, where the world has pressed pause and you kind of go, you know, my plants are still growing. They still need to be sprayed and watered and taken care of. And they're still leaning towards the light and nature is continuing to grow and go. And, you know, the birds are chirping and spring is on its way. So So it's a lovely reminder. And I find nature indoors as well as outdoors, just very grounding. Um, Exactly. I, I so agree. I love that you've got plants in your house. That that says a lot about you, that you care for them and that they, they also throw lovely energy into your home as well. They do. Um, they do. I mean, Harry, having pets. I just love when I see people that have pets because it's so cute as well when you see the trouble they go to to make their pet as comfortable in their home. You know, in fact, my two little dogs, I have two Bichons. I love they, they rule the roost. Like literally we live in their home. Oh, it feels like that some days, you know, and they've got all their comforts here. And it's, it's, it's hilarious how your life can kind of bend and adapt around these little beings. Oh, Harry is the exact same. A very similar story here. He's got a little chaise long, which is like his day lane. <laughs> and then he's got his igloo what he, that he gets into in the evening, you know, to spend the night. But um, so coming back to you, you, you also mentioned art as well. Uh, yes. I do have some pieces of art. Again, nothing... Nothing, I'm just driven by what I like. Um, and that's as simple as that. And, and actually, I've used the art to inject some color. I've got a maser, which I love, mm-hmm. kind of geometric. Again, loads of bright colors. I've got, a, yep. these are three pieces that I have hanging on that blue wall I, I described earlier on. I've got, um, I've got the artist's name escapes me now, which is going to annoy me. Do you remember during the marriage equality referendum? Yes. A mural was erected overnight on Georgia Street of... Yeah. Yes. And embracing. 
Uh, well, I do. I had I had shared something about that on my Instagram at the time, and the artist got in touch with me, or I met him. I actually. I bumped into him. He introduced himself to me at Bloom in Phoenix Park. That's exactly what it was. And, wow. Uh, he's a school teacher, but an artist then in his, in his spare time. And I was, I was talking to him and I said, I, I love it so much. And he very kindly sent me uh, an original print, which I had framed and I have hanging up on the wall here as well, which I love. I love the sentiment. And then in the middle of those three, I have a piece of art from a friend of mine an Israeli artist who's based in LA. Uh, his his handle is this is this is Amit. That's his uh, his excellent. Name. And he's kind of a graphic a graphic artist, and he's worked with like Louis Vuitton and Colette in Paris when it was in its day. And I love yeah. his stuff. And he gave me one of one of my favorite pieces of his art in a print, which I've had framed as well. So those three on the wall there. Uh, what else have I got? I've got. I've actually got I've got a print a, a Damien Hurst print of his butterfly kaleidoscope. I love them. Yeah. Yeah. And then I've uh I've two I've a big canvas of two giraffes kind of embracing. Or sorry, not giraffes, zebras <laughs> embracing almost. Um and then I've loads of other bits and pieces around the house. But uh, And and Darren, tell me about your work process. Do you do you work from home? I do and I don't. And that's, that's the interesting thing. So for me to be working from home is not a massive stretch of the imagination. And I feel like I've 15 years on everyone else who's never done this before because I, <laughs> yeah. I started working from home when I was, I went out on my own when I was in my early twenties. And that was a real test and a real struggle to, to not go mad. Uh, obviously I really missed, I'm a very social creature as we all are, but I really missed the contact the routine mm-hmm. and all those things. So I set about setting up that structure. And my advice to anyone who's struggling at the moment with working from home is it's all about creating the structure and habit and routine. And I, I guess I've kept that. Now, in many respects, I'm, I, my work could be anywhere. You know, it's a TV studio, it's a photography studio, it's hosting live events, it's being, you know, going through the airport and sometimes from home. So I actually work less from home over the past couple of years than I would have previously, but right. uh, it's still, I, I guess I still have the setup here and it's no bother. And do you find that you bring um, your social media work home a lot? Do you find that that is a plus or a minus in your life? At the moment, I mean, I've no choice. Um, yep. Otherwise I try to, I try to be quite diligent about it. I mean, I used to, at one stage I had, I'm diligent about not doing it um, whilst I'm at home and in the evening because you can spend your life on social media and you're missing, you know, what's unfolding in front of you. Mm-hmm. Um, I did kind of initiate at one point social media free Sundays. Great. Um, How's that going? Well, I, it's not going. I did it, I'd say, <laughs> I fell out of the habit because for me, again, it was like my job is not a Monday to Friday, nine to five. It never was. So I could be working on a Sunday. So for me, to, uh, you know, which might in, entail having to use my social media channels for whatever reason. So of course. it makes it difficult. Uh, so the blind, the, the, the lines get blurred, but it's about maintaining a hold on it. And I think for me at the moment, I've struck that balance. And I think for anyone and each of us individually, it's about finding what that balance is for you. Yeah, good. And it also depends on 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 the day I've had, on the week I've had, on the time of the evening. And, you know, so uh, I guess it's always about remembering that those channels, as good as they are, are just, you know, they're one medium through which I work. And um, I also have control of them. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. And communication is absolute key at the moment. Would you agree? I mean, it's just everything. Yes, it is. I think we just need to be uh, careful. We're not overwhelmed by it. I mean, communication has always been so important, but it's never been so easy to communicate, which is fantastic. I mean, I talk to my That's true. Daughter and my nieces and my nephews and my parents, and I see them every day on Skype or on FaceTime, which is super, you know, and I couldn't imagine doing this without being able to see them and have that communication. That's true. That's true. And, and, and as you've just mentioned your family, Darren, can I ask you about Christmas? What was Christmas like in your home? Christmas? Oh, well, do you know what? Oh my God, I have a confession. This year I didn't put up a Christmas tree. 
I only put oh. a, a teeny tiny one. I normally get a, a full on tree and do the full trimmings. But this year I didn't because I was traveling. I was basically not in Dublin up until the six or seven weeks before Christmas. I was like a yo-yo. And it was only I got back to Dublin really my last trip was on the 18th of December. And then I knew on um, by the 23rd of December, I go to my parents' house and or I'll spend it at family. So, and then I went away to South Africa on the 27th. So oh, wow. I was like, I'm not coming home on the 12th of January or whatever it was and having to face taking down a Christmas tree that I've only looked at twice. Exactly. I get that. I've done many Christmases abroad and I've actually kind of said, no, I'm not going to do a tree. So when you were a child though, like in your childhood home, what was Christmas like? Oh, my mom does Christmas in a big way and she still does. So when I go to, to my parents' house, I mean, there's at least two Christmas trees. There'll be lights outside. There'll, uh, you know, there'll be a reindeer in the back garden lit up. I mean, she goes hell for the weather. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. But, and she loves it. I mean, the dog will have a, you know, her dog gets a, like a, a little Christmas Santa hat. I mean, it's the full works. Excellent. So you've got good memories of Santa and Christmas. Oh, the best memories. Yeah, I, I really do cherish them. And my parents used to line us up. There's three of us. I'm in the middle. I've my older brother and a younger sister. And uh, we would be lined up at the top of the stairs uh, by the banisters. And then we would be brought down with our eyes closed and led into the sitting room where we would each have an, an area assigned where Santa had come. And it was just the, yeah, the best memories. Oh, not like in my house where where uh, my brother used to open all my presents, including his. Presents. What are you serious? <laughs> oh my god, there would have been all a war if that happened. There was all a war, and it was caught on home videos too. Oh, so, uh, I like to look back at that. I often think though, and I do look back sometimes that we've in the later years we kind of home videos and pictures. My brother is five years older than me and eleven years older than my sister. So like whilst. I was pretending to still believe, and my sister 100% believed, my brother had no more interest than he was a teenager and wanted to be out with his friends. But in fairness, oh, yeah. he entertained us while we, we, we went through the motions. <laughs> Hilarious. And Darren, just um, a question. It's a bit of an off-piste one, but are you a spiritual person? Yes. Mm. yes. I, I, I'm certainly more spiritual in the past few years than, I, than I've given credit to um i've always felt and i always feel very connected to the world around me actually and i think that comes back to my natural love and desire to be in and with nature mm -hmm. and yeah i do i feel very connected and grounded within myself and connected to at at times and i guess it depends of what's going on in my, my life, but certainly at times of maybe heightened um, personal strife, to put a label on it, I, I feel the strength of my ancestors. In particular, wow. the granny, actually, the, the, the granny who I referenced that you're on with the elephant. I very mm -hmm. much do. Yeah, yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. I, it's in me. My spirituality is in me. I'd love to ask you a few quick fire questions, if I may. Yes, go for it. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay, bath or shower? Shower. Which ones do you put on first, socks or jocks? Oh, jocks. Text or talk? Talk. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Uh, bed, left or right? Oh, right, always. Cat or dog? This is an obvious question oh, for you. Oh, God, I do love cats as well. <laughs> Red or white wine? I don't drink wine unless it has bubbles in it. Taxi or walk? Oh, I love to walk. Walk. Home or abroad? <sighs> Listen, in the time we're at now, I'm so grateful to be home. Home. Eat in or take out? Take out. High street or couture? A mix of both. Kanye or Donald Trump? Oh, neither. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Darren. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care. You. Stay safe. Yeah, stay safe. And I look forward to meeting you at some point in the future when we're back to normal. 100%. Thanks. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Bye-bye.